New tonight, homeownership is one of the most important paths to wealth, but a Where's the Money investigation found securing a mortgage or home equity loan is far more difficult here for black borrowers. Our team discovered most of Charlotte's biggest lenders are denying black men and women two to three times more often than their white counterparts. WCNC Charlotte's Nate Morbido spent months analyzing federal mortgage data, talking to banks, credit unions, mortgage companies, and advocates. He found that despite their efforts, equity remains out of reach for some, but there are ways to change that. Our investigation found mortgage disparities spanning every income bracket, showing a systemic problem ripe for reform. Yes. Shea Myers is just one month away. I'm not there yet. From owning her own home. I love the colors. Today, she's cherishing every detail. I love the stonework. Each a reminder of the hard work. I'm happy I got a porch. That brought her to this North Charlotte neighborhood. It took a lot to get here. A journey that started three years ago with a denial. By analyzing two years worth of federal data collected through the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act, we discovered mortgage denials are far more common for people who are black. The numbers show most of the largest lenders in the Charlotte market deny black applicants two to three times more often than those who are white, with some banks in particular denying nearly half of those who apply. What does that tell you? What that tells me is nothing has changed. Freedom, freedom. Floyd Davis marched for civil rights in the 60s. He's still pushing for equity. It's very difficult on some respects to understand and still tolerate where we are today. But I have to step back and say, OK, Floyd, what can you do about it? Davis is president and CEO of Community Link, an organization that helps people become homeowners, teaching them financial literacy and helping them clean up their credit. You end up with a lot of debt and nobody has taught you how to handle that. The former United Way CEO says black men and women are saddled with more debt and less savings, a byproduct of their circumstances. But Davis says the federal government's lending rules, strengthened after the 2008 housing collapse, don't accommodate that built-in disadvantage when deciding if a black applicant is able to repay a mortgage. It's set up in a automated underwriting system, and it's designed for you, not for me. If you want to talk about something that's as un-American as you can imagine, it's that, where your credit profile is worse because of the community you live in and how you've been treated by the majority institutions. Irvin Henderson is a longtime fair housing advocate from North Carolina. I am Irvin Henderson. He once even testified before a congressional banking committee. He's not suggesting a shift back to awarding bad loans. Some folks need to be denied because their behavior has not been solid. And he's not downplaying the need for more financial literacy in black communities. But he says the only way to really address these disparities is to get the industry to change. The most important solution is sensitive underwriting. There are reasons why a person of color might have higher debt to income ratios. With a new administration now in the White House, the federal agency that oversees the mortgage industry calls racial equity a top priority. Industry banking groups tell us they continue to advocate for policy changes that can help reduce lending disparity rates. They would not answer our questions on camera, but rather provided statements, telling us they remain committed to working with policymakers to reduce the structural barriers standing in the way of hardworking and deserving Americans who may not all qualify under current rules. Rules that are rigorous, particularly for banks, and include internal and federal oversight. They are trying. Advocates recognize the steps lenders are taking within the current constraints to try and help. The North Carolina Bankers Association shared a five-page list of just some of the initiatives area banks are taking part in, investing millions in special loan programs, down payment assistance grants, grants to reduce interest rates, home buyer education, and more. They don't have a face in that community. But Davis says those banks also need to build new branches to rebuild trust. In the meantime, there are success stories. My debt to income. It was just too high, and my credit score is too low. Debt to income ratio and credit history are the reasons for Shea Meyer's original denial, and most denials. It goes back to the old times where you have to work twice as hard. The 30-year-old first started caring for her wheelchair-bound mother at the age of 18. She's also raising two kids and providing for her deaf grandmother. Needless to say, she works multiple jobs. Instead of giving up, 
she adapted. Oh, they put the floor in. Cleaning up her debt and improving her credit score. I went to probably like five, six home buying classes. And her reward is now just one month away. I can't wait till I get my keys so I can do the ugly cry. A historic moment for her family. I'm the first kid out of my mom's that she raised to be a homeowner and have a good credit score, and I'm the youngest. An especially significant accomplishment when you consider this. Of the more than 153,000 Charlotte area mortgages in 2018 and 2019 where a person's race is listed, federal data show only 13% went to black men and women, a group that makes up almost a quarter of the region's population. This is just a snapshot of mortgage lending. We don't have access to the specifics of every loan denial like regulators and lenders do. The American Bankers Association told us any meaningful review of fair lending practices must include those details, like a borrower's credit score, credit history, debt to income, and loan to value ratios. Nate Morabito, WCNC Charlotte. Not only did industry groups turn down our requests for on-camera interviews, so did the dozen largest lenders in the market. You can see all of their denial percentages and responses on the WCNC app. And next Tuesday at 9 p.m., we'll be hosting a virtual town hall dedicated to finding solutions. You can find that on the WCNC Facebook page and also our YouTube channel.